What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the most foundational important sounds in electronic music. Kind of like how rock or metal have some really central instruments, distorted electric guitar, bass, uh, real drum kit, that kind of thing. Electronic music actually has a few staples of its own like that and a lot of sounds and a lot of really crazy sound design springs off of that stuff and uses those sounds as a jumping off point. So today I'm going to show you rapid fire how to make a bunch of these sounds, where they come from, and how you would apply them. In this case, I'm using Serum because it's great for demonstration purposes. It's got a very visual interface, but most of the stuff that I'm going to show you can be done in pretty much any synth plugin that does subtractive synthesis. So let's kick things off with the Super Saw, probably the most found foundational sound in all of electronic music. And it has been that for decades. So here's my saw wave. And by the way, if you're not familiar with oscillators, what kind of waves there are and how synths work, I'll link a video in the description that I did a while back giving you a complete beginner's introduction to all the aspects of synths and how they work. But right now I'm going to assume you have at least passing knowledge of what some of this stuff is. So saw wave, and what I'm gonna do is crank the unison. And that immediately makes this gigantic, wide, thick sound. For those of you unfamiliar with Unison, it essentially takes a waveform, duplicates it a bunch, and then tweaks the pitch of each of those copies a little bit and then spreads them out across the stereo spectrum. Kind of like a choir of different people all singing one note. You get all this variation spread out and it creates a thick and wide sound. And you've heard this sound a lot. It can be taken in a lot of different directions. So for example, if I increase the release time so it rings out a bit, and then play some chords, you immediately get into kind of trancey and big room breakdown territory. If I increase the amount of time the sound takes to start as well, that being the attack, and maybe even increase the release time even more by quite a lot, That's the foundation for a pretty basic pad. And you can even go further with that by maybe cutting off some of the high end and adding some reverb. That starts getting you into your very typical pad sound territory. But right now I'm gonna turn this reverb off and take that filter away. Another thing that you can do with a pretty basic super saw is reduce the detune and Serum shows this very visually, which is great. By the way, real quick to demonstrate, over here it starts sounding like a swarm of bees. And then go down a couple octaves. And then if I take the voicing, go to mono, and turn up the glide so the notes start to blend together. And maybe even add some distortion. you get a low gritty bass that can be used in more retro kind of stuff or more modern stuff like modern big room progressive house where you have a gritty bass holding the whole thing down. Bringing the detune back up a bit and then bringing in a second oscillator and pitching that an octave up and then blending that in subtly. Bring up the glide even further, bring back that reverb. You've got the foundation for a lot of lead sounds, and from there you can take it quite a bit further depending on your processing and your filtering. But for now, let's get rid of all that extra stuff, bring this back to being a super basic super saw. What I'm going to do now is introduce that filter again, the high cut filter or the low pass filter, same thing. I'm going to set this first LFO to an envelope. Essentially, that means it's gonna direct the movement of another parameter and just do it once and then hold it there. So what I'm going to do is set it like this and assign it to the cutoff. So what's about to happen is the high cut filter is gonna start off letting the entirety of the sound pass through it. So you get a nice sharp start to it. And then it's going to immediately clamp down on its high end like this. And you've probably recognized this. You've heard stuff that sounds like this before and this is called a pluck. And there's quite a bit that you can do to tweak how the sounds if I want to have it clamp down more quickly. You get a sound like this, maybe I'll let it ring out a bit. Bring back that reverb. That's a bit much. 
And of course I can control the cutoff as well as a whole. And of course you can take it a lot of places from there either as bass or as a chord element, like you'd hear in say a Dead Mouse song, or even as a lead. Maybe have it clamped down even further. You hear this used as an ARP a lot as well. And what you can do if you want to have energy slowly build over the course of a section of a track is have your cutoff start out low, so your pluck is pretty laid back, and then start raising the cutoff over time. So you do this with automation. To build on this further, let's introduce resonance. So this right here creates a little peak that you can see pretty visually, and I'll show you what it sounds like as I ramp this up. Start to get that kind of vowel-y performance there. And if I bring this down a couple octaves, that's the basis for what's called an acid Bass. And you'll hear this a lot in kind of old school house and techno, but you've even heard it in more modern contexts. For instance, there's a version of an acid bass in Skrillex's remix of Sicko Mode. And you can get quite a gritty sound, once again, adding more distortion. And there are a lot of other effects that you can get with resonance, but I'm going to leave it there for now and just introduce you to what it's theoretically capable of. So moving on, let's talk a bit about sub bass. Typically when you're doing a gritty bass sound, you want to separate the messy, noisy, gritty part from the sub and keep the sub clean. That's a pretty common technique you'll hear in both old and new dubstep. And here in Serum, there's a direct way to do this, but you can also do this with just two instances of a synth where you can do direct out. So this sub will not get affected by any of the effects or processing. And it's just a sine wave. Of course, there's a lot more that you can do with that though. For instance, if you want to simulate an 808, obviously the best way to get an 808 is just to find a sample of one and then pitch it around to make it fit within your track. But if you want more control over the exact parameters or even just a different sound entirely, you can make kind of a fake 808 yourself. So I've got my sub here and I'm going to let it be affected by the processing here and I'm gonna turn that distortion back on. That's a bit much. And then I'm gonna let it ring out a good bit and put it on mono. So each new key cuts off the previous key. So here's what that sounds like. And another thing people will sometimes do when designing their own 808s from scratch is to even have a little pitch bend at the very beginning. So it starts an octave up and then quickly jumps an octave down. So it does this little mew, which is by the way, how all synthetic kick drums are made is a very quick downward movement in pitch. Another thing that you'll hear in kind of more mainstream future bass and trap, so someone like Marshmallow is a really gritty sub with something like a triangle wave with a whole bunch of distortion on it. The advantage that this has is that this will cut through on any sound system. Whether you're listening on a nice sound system or on a set of laptop speakers, that bass, at least its upper harmonics, are gonna be able to be easily heard. Whereas with some kind of sub bass, a lot of that can get lost on tinnier sound systems. So for people trying to make stuff that's a little more mass appealing, having a nice distorted sub bass, a nice gritty sub bass can be really useful. And finally, let's talk about bass growls. And this gets incredibly deep incredibly quickly. So I'm just gonna show you one way to do it. If you get into stuff like FM synthesis and additive synthesis, you can do a lot of really crazy stuff completely from scratch. This is not that, but this represents a lot of really common techniques being used in bass music right now. So here's my growl. And so let me strip this back to the absolute bare bones. So get rid of you. Doesn't sound like much. So the foundation of this is a custom wavetable. This is a thing that's specific to Serum, but you'll also see this in stuff like Massive where they've got these built-in waveforms that are already inherently gritty, have some bite to them, have some distortion to them. So people know like modern talking or something from Massive. And then Serum went one step further by letting you design your own wavetables from scratch. So you can either click it in with a mouse or you can pull in audio files and it'll like chop it up 
and turn it into a wavetable. And you have a whole lot of options for manipulating it and getting a nice sounding wavetable from there. So this is an old dubstep sound that I made from a previous song. I brought that into here. So the first thing is I'm gonna get rid of the warp mode, which essentially warps the shape of this window of the wavetable. So here's what it sounds like with only the volume going through this shape. That's the original wavetable and it's not much to listen to. So the first thing I did was I added this warp mode. That immediately transforms the sound. There are a lot of warp modes in here that are worth playing with. Uh, Ben plus and minus are good, asymmetry I like. Mirror is good for some kind of crazy stuff. But I'm gonna stick with the original. So that in and of itself gets you to some gritty sounds already. But here's the thing that every dubstep producer and their mom is doing to get the rhythm sound. And it's these kinds of filters. So here's it without. Here's with. This is a flanger filter right here. There are a whole bunch of them. Phaser's also good. Comb filter's usually pretty good. And essentially this just boosts frequencies in a bunch of spots and then you can move the cutoff to get completely different sounds. And this is just sitting here, not moving at all but it goes a long way towards shaping the sound and getting that metallic nature. Add the sub. I have that on direct out, so it's essentially a separated sub. Notice how that changes the pitch. You might have to double check that that is actually hitting the note that you want, so compare it to another synth note with less crazy processing. But let's say I like it here-ish. Let's roll with it there for now. From there, what you can do is start going with effects. And I've got my effects pretty simple on this one. Uh, for one thing, if I want to, I could widen it out. I'm not going to for this one in particular. Uh, add this, it's multiband compression, just slamming the sound from both sides, the top and the bottom end, and then mixed in, not all the way, because that's a bit much. So this is another very common thing you'll see folks like Virtual Riot do. And then I've got a reverb with a super small room. And I could even crank that more if I wanted. And here it gets that metallic characteristic. It really brings that out. And of course, there's a ton of processing you can do beyond that. This is just the very tip of the iceberg. I'll link a couple of videos down in the description that you can check out that will go more in depth on techniques that bass music producers use to get growls and other such sounds. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to check out my complete beginner's intro to how synthesizers work and how to get into sound design, you can click or tap up over here. And if you'd like to watch a virtual Riot tutorial on Serum, designing sounds, and all that kind of stuff, you can click or tap down over here. I highly recommend it. And I'll be back with a new video in a couple of days.